The spring is a fantastic time to visit a deciduous woodland. Because the trees are still growing their leaves, lots of light still reaches the ground. There are hundreds of different flowers and other plants that take advantage of that sunlight along with the rains and milder weather that the spring brings to be able to do their growing and flowering. By the summer, much less sunlight reaches the ground, but by then the spring plants have done their flowering and are waiting to grow again next spring. Here we are, finding out about some of the plants in our local wood. There'll be one like this somewhere near you too. Now let's have a look at a few examples. So, what are these just here? Ah, uh, yes, Sean. Stinging nettles. Stinging nettles, that's right. They hurt you when you touch them. They do, And when they? you touch them, they sting for a bit. Brush against the leaf. Some of those little hairs, which are a bit like needles, will dig into your skin and inject a little bit of acid, and that's what causes the sting. But if you hold the nettle leaf really tightly, do that with it. There we go. I haven't got stung at all doing that. But once they're rolled up like this, you can actually eat nettle leaves. They taste like greens, so a bit like maybe a sort of a, a cabbage or a kale, that kind of flavour. This is an interesting plant. This one's called Butcher's Broom. Okay, and this is a funny spiky plant. And the reason it gets its name is because Butchers actually did used to use it to sweep their board clean because all these spiky bits pick up those little little pieces of meat that have been stuck to the board. Does anyone recognise this flower? Yes, Sean. Bluebell. Bluebells. That's right. And this wood in about a week or two's time it's going to be absolutely covered with bluebells because all of these leaves here, these ones, are bluebell leaves. I recognise this. It's just starting to grow. Yes, Charlie? A fern. A fern, that's right. You see here where the leaf is going to unroll gradually and then all these bits will open out as well and you'll get the fern shape. And these have been around for a really long time. Things like bracken as well. Bracken was around at the time of the dinosaurs. That it's actually fairly poisonous. So if something starts to eat it, that something will almost certainly end up dead within a fairly short time. I bet you all know what kind of a tree this is that we've got here. Anyone got any ideas? Uh, yes, Finn. A holly tree. A holly tree, that's right. Now, holly trees, are they deciduous or are they evergreen? <laughs> Elspeth. They're evergreen. They're evergreen, that's right. They're evergreen trees because, of course, they keep their leaves all through the winter, don't they? Where, where do we sometimes have, the, have bits of holly in the winter time? At Christmas time. Christmas time, excellent. Now, who knows what colour the flowers of a holly tree are? White. Some predators that would want to eat the leaves would normally be around um, this height and higher up. Not many predators will, will be able to reach that height. What does that smell of? Do you recognise it? Uh, yes, Lewis. Isn't it garlic? So um, what's it taste of? It tastes like really, really, it's really like really spicy. So this plant is wild garlic. The other name for it is ramsons. Oh and in this wood, there's actually lots of it growing.
I think it's important to learn about our world because it's such a lovely place. We need to learn what we can do and what we can't do. So we can sort of pass it on to our children because otherwise it, everyone will forget about what they've learned and they'll all be into new stuff like how TVs can work and all stuff like that instead of learning about the foods and what's out there. I think it's important that we learn about our world because then we could help the environment. The fact that there might not be a planet at the end of our lives. The Earth is the only planet with home.